that's what, my, that's what I'm saying to you. I'm quoting you that you, what you said is false. You see, you're going back to saying something I didn't say. This is typical of raging terrorists like you. I never said the Quran said you can marry your first cousin. You keep repeating the big lie to justify your sick hatred. No, you, you, you don't have hatred. You are, you are not, it's, it's like you have, you have... Uh, take a walk. Take a walk. Go into a subway somewhere and go get a soapbox. I'll repeat what I said. Inbreeding. Common in Islamic culture in the third world. I also said first current marriages are less common amongst Muslims in America, which is a good thing. But the enraged caller refused to not, chose not to hear that. I said that Pakistanis account for only 3% of births in the UK. And they make up 33% of children born with birth defects because of inbreeding. I'm trying to argue that we should eliminate first cousin marriage. Make it illegal in all states. Right now it's illegal in only some states. It's very simple. I'm calling for a policy position. There are state laws regarding marriages between first cousins of anybody. Forget Muslims for a minute. They're not the be-all and end-all of the world. You could be a nothing, a, a zero religion. First cousin marriage is prohibited in certain states. Unfortunately, it's allowed in other states under very, very strict restrictions. In Arizona, you can marry a, birth, a first cousin if both are over 65 and one or both are unable to reproduce. Now, why do you suppose that is? Because everyone knows that if you marry a cousin, the chances of such inbreeding are going to produce defective children. Illinois, you can marry a first cousin if both are 50 or older and one is unable to reproduce. Indiana, if both are at least 65. In Utah, if both are 65 or older, or if both are over 55, and one is unable to reproduce. So why do you suppose states limit first cousin marriage? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Except North Carolina, by the way, which has become a joke, can become a laugh line. In North Carolina, first cousin marriage is legal. 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 We're not talking about religion now. We're talking about genetics. Genetics, you need to have a, a minimal education to even discuss genetics. Well, I would say seventh grade uh, minimum to even know what the word genetics mean. Put religion aside. Why do you suppose there are inherent prohibitions against first cousin marriages in so many places in America? Because we know that it produces defective children. And it's not a good thing to do for the child or the society. And the good news is, is that most Muslims in America who have been here do not practice first cousin marriage. But as you can hear from the caller in the last segment, third worlders believe in the sufficiency of a single book. There is no other book for them. The intolerance is evident in the man's anger. He believes that there is only one book in the world, the only possible book. He doesn't even understand that this intolerant self-sufficiency that seems to make the Quran the only possible book was dropped by the 8th century. By the 8th century, Muslims dropped that idea that they only needed one book. And learning sprang up everywhere in the footsteps of the Arab conquerors. Once they gave up the backwards idea that you only needed one book, by the 8th century, there was an educational organization throughout the entire Arabized world because they gave up the ideas of our friend from WMAL who thinks he needs only one book. By the 9th century, learned men in the schools of Cordoba in Spain were corresponding with learned men in Cairo, Baghdad, Bukhara, and Samarkand. And then the Jewish mind assimilated very readily with the Arab mind. And the two Semitic races worked very well together through the medium of Arabic. Why? Because the Arabs had moved beyond their 7th century ISIS view of the sufficiency of a single book. Do you get it? I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. 
basically what I'm saying is it's time to discriminate. Discriminating and discriminate are very important words. It means to dif differentiate. Those of you who don't know what it means. The word discriminate used to mean simply to differentiate. To distinguish between good and bad, right from wrong, in order to make a correct choice. But because of the fools on the campuses and the rise of postmodernist Western stupidity, which is uncomfortable about judging anything to be good or bad, you know where that came from, don't you? You know where that came from, huh? Judgmentalism? That started when? In the 60s. From which community told you not to be judgmental? So as a result of this insanity, we're not supposed to be discriminating or dif differentiating between religions, cultures, sexualities, and so forth. In other words, everything's now the same. But it isn't the same. And that is why the president's children go to a private school. Because they have very intelligent parents who differentiate between bad schools and good schools. That is why the president's daughters are looking at the best colleges in America, so-called, because their parents are intelligent and they differentiate between bad schools and good schools. Right or wrong? So I gave you a little bit of a history lesson here, and I showed you how in the 7th century, when the Arabs swept across so much of the world through murder and flame and fire, conquered so many nations, after this conquest, things changed after 100 or 200 years. And uh, the intolerance of the early days of faith, which made the Quran seem like the only possible book, that intolerance was eventually dropped. And by the 8th century, 9th century, the Arab world had given so much to the world. Now we're going back to the 7th century with ISIS. How many of these idiots that Obama's bringing in from Syria are practicing a 7th century form of Islam? Or a 20th century form of Islam? Shouldn't there be a test as to where they are developmentally? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Amazing what happens when you actually try to bring a certain level of education to talk radio. It's very difficult. Let me tell you, if you do two legs good, four legs bad, and you stick to A and B, A and B, A and B, Democrat, Republican, A, B, A, B, A, B, and you don't go too far afield from those two tracks, it's an easy thing to do. But when you, you go outside the realm of the two tracks that most people ride on and listen to all day long, it, it's a very difficult business. It's not an easy business to do if you actually try to break new ground and break through of the break through the pseudo historical garbage that has altered our minds uh, more formidably than LSD had in the 1960s. The lies coming out of the academic government complex are far worse on our minds than LSD was in the 1960s. The lies coming out of Jake Tapwater, Wolf Blitzer and all of the other liars in the media are worse than all of the pseudo-historians put together. How they distort what I say, what Trump says, what others say. They're very dangerous propagandists. They're altering your mind in a way that drugs could never alter your mind. And so when you go up against the tide every day, you're going to find resistance, and people will say you said things you didn't even say. So you have to listen a little more carefully, because learning is very hard. Learning is difficult. Psychotherapy is difficult. Ask any therapist. A real test of whether psychotherapy is working is whether it makes you uncomfortable. If your therapy, if therapist is not making you uncomfortable, you're not having therapy, you're a yenta. And you're talking to a yenta for $400 an hour. Write that down. Put it on YouTube. If your psychiatrist or therapist is not making you uncomfortable, then you're not having psychotherapy. You're not going to change. You're just a yenta, a busybody, a gossip. And a con man or a con woman is sitting with the legs crossed, listening to your garbage, telling you whatever you did is good. And you're paying her $400 an hour to tell you that you're okay. I'm okay, you're okay, now give me the 400 bucks. That's not psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is hard work. Learning is very hard work. I was uncomfortable every day of my life in college. Every course I took made me uncomfortable. Mathematics was very hard. Organic chemistry was even harder. Everything I took was hard. I could have taken stupid courses in political science. That would have been easy. And I could have become a community organizer working for some labor union in New York. 
and then gone hung around with the politicians who are now running New York, the idiots who couldn't take any hard courses. So the fact is, is that anything that's, that's worth anything is difficult. I learned that when I was a little boy. Now, look what's going on in the campuses today. Because of the postmodernist insanity that everyone is equal, everyone belongs on Yale's campus, for example. They've ushered people into Yale through affirmative action that never, ever qualified to go to Yale. As a result, Yale is melting down. There's a story from two days ago that I, I was holding because it was too painful to even talk about. They forced a wonderful couple to, to quit, a white couple. He's a full professor of medicine. His wife was a full professor of another subject. And the jackals attacked the wife for something she wrote that was so mild, you would say, how could they get mad at that? Because it made some of the affirmative action attendees uncomfortable. So the husband professor went out in the quad to try and reason with these jackals. And you know what happened? Listen carefully to what happened to the full professor of medicine from one of the jackals in the square at Yale. You should step down! If that is what you think about being a professor, you should step down! It is not about creating an intellectual thing! It is not! Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here! You are not doing that! You're supposed You're to be our advocate! That. You should be at that event last night when you hear a Franco say that she didn't know how to create a safe place for her freshman in Tillman. How do you explain that? These freshmen come here, they think this is what Yale is? Do you hear that? They're going to leave, they're going to transfer because you are a poor steward of the community. You should not sleep at night. We're out, we're out. We're You're out. disgusting. So there's the Al Sharpton group that they brought into Yale. And they learn very, very well. If you can't keep up, you shout as loud as you can and you scare the professors. That nice professor and his wife resigned the next day. And they're young people in their 40s. And as a result, the school lost two wonderful professors. And the jackals have won. Now, do you know where this ends up? Do you know how this goes? Do you know how this winds up? If you give in to the mobs? Do you understand where this came from? It came from Barack Obama. He taught them this whole game of shouting people down, scaring people with yelling and screaming about white privilege, all of these invented terms invented by white communists to destroy the system itself. You know how this ends up? Take a look at Zimbabwe. That's how it ends up. Okay, so that's one example. People don't want to be uncomfortable in their learning. It should be a pleasant experience. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So they take courses in ethnic studies, make up journals, and they, they give each other rewards. Sex studies, gender studies, all of this garbage, this invented garbage that doesn't even belong on campuses to begin with. These are no longer institutions of higher learning. They're institutions of lower living. Let's go to the callers. Tom on line six. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hey, Michael. Hey, uh, you mentioned earlier about um, putting a policy together to ensure that Muslims don't marry um, first Cousins. No, no, you didn't hear. Again, you said Muslims. I said no. I didn't say Muslims. Now you're sounding like the guy in the subway from MAL. I said first cousin marriage should be prohibited in America. I didn't say Muslims. I said first cousin marriage, period. You're right. I'm sorry about that. But my point was this. The libertarian perspective is why is even the government involved in marriage? Well, this is the kind of stupidity. You, you have the same mentality as the Muslims from the 7th century who believe in the, 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 the libertarian perspective. So now you're applying it across the board without any discernment. You have the same limited mind, the same limited mind as the person practicing the 7th century Islam does. How can you apply? How can you say the government has no place in that? There should be no traffic lights, no red, yellow, and uh, and green lights because the government made the lights. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm agreeing with. You. Well, no, the libertarian perspective would indicate that there should be no no uh, traffic lights either because that's evil government, right? I believe that marriage is definitely between, you know, a man and a woman. But, but you're applying the same limited mindset as the seventh century Muslim did who believed in the single the sufficiency of a single book. So you're applying the sufficiency of a single idea called libertarianism, and you're not even using it intelligently. You're saying it, it should apply across the board. Government should have no role in anything, is what you're saying, right? Uh, no, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that my libertarian friends, and I have a libertarian leaning, I, we sometimes we get we argue and we debate over this. And I understand, but you're not thinking. All you're doing is 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 repeating a homily over and over.